Hello everyone, I am Muskan Modgill and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will be revising some really important livestock diseases, starting with bacterial and then followed by viral diseases. So let's get started. We will be covering three bacterial diseases in this video, anthrax, blackwater and brucellosis. Starting with the anthrax disease, it is caused by bacillus anthracis which as you can see on the top left corner is a rod shaped gram positive bacteria. Now anthrax is characterized by exudation of tarry blood from the orifices of the carcass. Wow that was a lot of terminologies right? So let's break it up. Anthrax is characterized by exudation which means release of deep red blood from the orifices of the carcass, now orifices is the external openings, for example the nostrils, the anus of the carcass that is the dead body of the animal. Anthrax has worldwide distribution with seasonal outbreaks in India which occurs usually during the rains and this disease affects mostly the cattle, sheep and goats. So we can say that its primary hosts are the herbivores. Talking about the etiology that is the cause of anthrax, as discussed earlier it is caused by bacillus anthracis which is a gram-positive, relatively large, encapsulated, rod-shaped bacillus. Now, what are gram-positive bacteria? Gram-positive bacteria have a thick peptidoglycan cell wall and they test positive for the gram staining, that is, they retain the purple color dye. Bacillus anthracis grows really well under aerobic conditions, that is, the oxygen-rich conditions, and its spores are not formed until it has been exposed to air. Talking about the spread, anthrax spores are highly resistant, they are unharmed even by the gastric juices, therefore they have the ability to pass on to the intestine and cause the infection there. Another point to note down here is that anthrax spores are so resistant that they can live up in the contaminated soil for up to 40 to 60 years and in the bone marrow of the dead animal for around 200 to 250 years. Talking about the signs, death is the first indication of the presence of anthrax disease because the pathogenesis is so quick that it leaves no room for the development of symptoms. In those animals wherein the symptoms are observed, anthrax is recognized as a febrile disease. What is febrile? Febrile is when the animal shows fever, here in up to the 107 degree Fahrenheit mark. It is also accompanied with signs of depression, weakness, bloody discharges from the body orifices, cyanosis, dyspnea and occasional subcutaneous swellings. What is cyanosis? Cyanosis is the bluish colouring of skin due to the lack of oxygen supply and dyspnea is the laboured or heavy breathing. Now if you find it hard to memorize all these amount of veterinary terminologies, I have made two videos on terminologies. So make sure to check them out as well. As for the lesions, the spleen is greatly enlarged and engorged with dark unclotted blood. The lymph nodes are also swollen, edematous and sometimes hemorrhagic. If the animals in your herd are suddenly dying in large numbers, you can suspect an anthrax infection. Anthrax can also be recognized based on the gross lesions on necropsy. What is necropsy? It is the post-mortem examination of the animal body. Whereas when the post-mortem is done in case of humans, it is called as autopsy. Anthrax can also be diagnosed using the precipitation test known as Escoli's test. And blood smears may be prepared from one of the small ear veins and stained with methylene blue. Another very important question that is also often asked in exams is why should we never open a suspected anthrax carcass during post-mortem? As discussed earlier, the sporulation does not occur inside the body. So as long as the carcass is unopened, the contamination and the spores will not spread. But once spread, it will contaminate the whole soil and area for next 40 to 60 years. So it should be very carefully handled. As for the prevention and control, immunization of the herd using the Stearns vaccine through subcutaneous route is preferred. Moreover, there must be proper carcass disposal using the deep burial method and with the cover of quick lime. As per the management practices, grazing practices, vector control and report of case must be done. Now let's talk about our second bacterial disease for today which is black water. Black water is caused by Clostridium shivoi and it is characterized by inflammation of skeletal and cardiac muscles, severe toxemia and high mortality. Toxemia can be defined as blood poisoning through toxins due to the local bacteria infection. Another very important point to note here is that Clostridium shivoi results in gas gangrene or crostidial sepsis. 
Gangrene can be defined as a dead tissue due to infection or decreased blood flow and since in our case it is a gas gangrene it is accompanied by a foul smelling gas black water is enzootic in particular areas of india and the mortality rate can even approach up to 100% black water has caused severe financial losses to cattle farmers and for the most part major outbreaks can be prevented by vaccination As for the etiology Clostridium shoei is a gram positive spore forming rod shaped bacterium the spores are highly resistant to environmental changes and disinfectants and may persist in soil for many years like the anthrax spores as for the spread black water is a soil borne infection and the portal of entry is through the alimentary mucosa after the ingestion of spores in the contaminated feed in sheep the disease is almost always a wound infection Talking about the pathogenesis of black water after ingestion of spores the bacteria multiplies in the intestine of animal it then crosses the intestinal mucosa and enters the general circulation there then they are deposited in number of organs and tissues including skeletal muscles and here the spores remain dormant until the damage to the muscle sets up an appropriate environment once the organisms begin to multiply they then release the toxins locally as discussed earlier Now Clostridium shoei produces four types of toxins alpha beta gamma and delta alpha toxin is both necrotizing and hemolytic necrosis is the death of cells or tissue and hemolysis is the breakdown of red blood cells beta toxin is a deoxyribonuclease gamma toxin is in hyaluronidase and delta toxin is an hemolysis it degrades the lecithin which is a major component of cell membranes and thus destroying the red blood cells platelets and muscle cells causing myonecrosis as for the signs and lesions black water is most common in young animals from 6 months to 2 years of age affected animals are often found dead before signs of illness are seen lameness high fever and visible swelling of muscles is observed in the early stages the swelling is hot and painful to touch but it becomes cold and painless in the later stages the lesions consist of crepitant swelling this is very important crepitant swelling is making a crackling sound and in the muscles particularly of the extremities rancid odor is also observed now for the prevention and control the diseased cattle should be isolated treatment is generally unrewarding due to the rapid progression of the disease but penicillin is the drug of choice for treatment In endemic areas vaccinate all the animals above 6 month of age before the onset of monsoon burning the upper layer of soil with straw to eliminate the spores in endemic area is also helpful sprinkle lime or disinfectant over the carcass at the time of burial now let's talk about our last bacterial disease which is brucellosis Brucellosis is also known as Malta fever, undulant fever and Bangs abortion disease. Now why is it called an abortion disease because it causes a series of abortion in the whole herd rapidly. As for the etiology, brucella species are small, non-motile cocobacillary gram negative bacteria. Now cocobacillus is the shape of bacteria intermediate between a coccus that is round and bacillary that is the rod shape. The bacteria is aerobic and capnophilic. Capnophilic means that they thrive well in large concentrations of carbon dioxide. Brucella abortus requires 5 to 10% carbon dioxide for primary isolation. Now this is a chart showing various species of Brucella bacteria, their zoonotic potential and host preference. For example, Brucella melanotensis is the highest zoonotic potential of Brucella. Zoonotic potential means that its ability to transmit from humans to animals and vice versa. The preferred hosts are sheep and goat followed by Brucella abortus which has a moderate zoonotic potential and the host preference is the cattle. Then comes Brucella suis which has a moderate zoonotic potential and the host preference is pig. Similarly there's Brucella canis for dog, Brucella ovis for sheep, Neotome for desert wood rat. Seti for cetaceans, Pinni pedalis for seals and Microti for common voles. Abortion is the most important and the most significant sign of brucella infection. In cattle this abortion occurs in the 3rd trimester which is the 7th and 8th month of gestation. In the infected sows the abortion is between 2nd and 3rd month of gestation. In canines the infection in bitches leads to abortion usually after 50 days of gestation. In the male dogs brucella infection can lead to orchitis and epididymitis 
Orchitis is the inflammation of one or both testicles and epididymitis is the inflammation of epididymis. The bacteria may be excreted through the milk. Therefore, for the prevention and control, proper pasteurization of dairy products is very essential. Pasteurization is heating up of the milk to 72 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds and 63 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes to kill all the pathogens. Vaccination of animals against brucella bortus is through the S19 vaccine. However, in humans, no vaccination is available. So, if a human female gets infected with brucella, it will cause abortion. Whereas, if a male human is infected with brucella, it gets localized in the testis forever. That was all for the bacterial diseases. We will also discuss two very important viral diseases which is FMD and Rinderpest in the upcoming videos. <laughs>